Now it's time to get our hands dirty. Let's set up our PDI and play in a sandbox. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I share my journey in tech, both on the career side and the education and learning side. Today, we're going to talk about the PDI. And PDI is short for Personal Developer Instance, also referred to affectionately as the ServiceNow Sandbox. So this is a place where you can basically play around with apps using dummy data, like dummy users, fillers, all those cool roles. And you can start to explore what the platform can do and take that learned experience and put it into your own developer instance if you're a certified system administrator and you're an administrator over the platform in your organization. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the site. We'll show you how to sign up and then we will um, show you how to get started because there are some areas that are a little confusing when you first get into your instance. Okay, so here we are in our developer.servicenow.com site. I'll leave a link to this below. And this is basically the first step that you're going to go through when you're trying to set up your instance. You need to come to this site. And if you've already created an account with ServiceNow, you can go ahead and sign in or it will prompt you to sign up. So you can sign up and start building here. So let's go ahead and click on this link. And it's going to bring you to a page like this. You'll go ahead and fill everything out. And then once you've done that, you'll be prompted to verify your email in whichever account you set up. And from that point, once you verify, it should bring you back to the sign in page and sign in with the password. And then it'll bring you to your active personal developer instance page. All right. So I made a dummy account and I'm going to show you essentially how you can get started. So once you sign in and this is your first time working with the developer website, you're going to determine how you want to get started. So they have two different levels. So number one is do you code? If yes, they're going to give you this IDE or developer ID oriented experience. If you say no, then they'll be able to provide you with a guided experience. Now, personally, I'm not a coder. I have aspirations to learn how to code a little bit more. I know some basic, basic HTML and I've copied and pasted some VBA stuff in Excel, <laughs> but that's about the extent that I know. So if we click on no, then I'm going to go ahead and hit select or select next. And it's going to ask me what best describes your responsibilities. So even if you're not in the role yet, you can still check one of these that best design, best describe. Now I will say that it admin gives you the highest level view. And with this view, you can definitely turn things on and off. Although this isn't necessarily going to dictate what view you get in terms of helping service now and this site in particular feed you certain articles, I would definitely select admin, but you can also select developer or designer. Any one of these that you feel is in alignment with where you want to go in your career. So let's go ahead and click finish setup. And now it brings me to this page. So we says, hello, David, that's my fake name today. And welcome to ServiceNow. Build apps in minutes using ServiceNow App Engine Studio with no code or low code capabilities. So you can click on start building. You can look for content that's available in different releases. Now, the thing that we're gonna do here, we're not gonna explore this whole site because there's a lot of information that you can just review on your own. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna request an instance. We're going to make sure we know where the credentials are. And for that instance, I'm gonna talk to you about maintaining activity in the instance so you can keep all your stuff. And then we'll also look at how you switch between developer mode and the administrator mode. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to request the instance. Now you can click on the drop down here and you can see this is my account. This is my email address. And it says here, get a free developer instance. You can request it here or you can restore an instance that you may have had access to. The other way you can do it is by simply clicking on request instance. So if I click here, it brings me to slightly new options. And so currently it's fulfilling the request. You can see that this thing is loading up. It's a kind of like a hourglass, if you will. It's fulfilling the request currently. So it's finding an instance for us and it's going to create that and look at that. It did it rather quickly. 
So depending on when you're in this environment, it could be a little slower. Now, the release that it's giving us access to is the Tokyo release. So that's the version that we're going to be able to access. So a lot of times when I first started, I just went on and started building and it took me to an, an environment that I just wasn't familiar with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on change user role first. And this is where you can determine whether or not you want to work with App Engine Studio or admin. Now, if you're looking to just create applications, this is fine. You can stay in the AES creator view or App Engine Studio creator view. And there's a lot of cool apps you can create for any number of like specific service requests or process requests, things like that. But generally, most people are working as an admin level. And here you can actually manage the platform a little bit more enhance the security, impersonate people, work with incidents, requests, reporting, and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna just click change user role. And here we have the message saying, your change user role request is completed, or is completed successfully. And then it gives me some content here. So this is important information you wanna store. This'll be your password for your instance. And I'm not worried about covering this up because I have my own instance. This is just for demo purposes. But definitely keep this stuff safe. You don't want anyone going into your your instance and, and changing things up after you worked hard to build it to a certain level. OK, so now that I have it copied, I can either click on the URL or click on open instance. So I'll click on open instance instead. All right, now that I've opened my instance, I can basically start getting to work in the environment. So now you're in this environment. The way that you know you're in the right view, especially as an administrator, is on the top right here, you got this guy that looks like Tom from MySpace. <laughs> so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and you can just see that you're a role system administrator and then you can, you have a lot of privileges. You can impersonate a user, you can elevate your role to really high security levels. You can look at your profile, all that stuff. So you're the administrator, you're a sysadmin, and you can do all the functions of an administrator within the platform. You can also navigate to the App Engine Studio. You can click here and it'll take you to the AES Studio where you can create low code applications like really with ease. So it's a, it's a cool feature. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention that is really important for you to remember is that if you want to uh, keep your instance and you want to keep building within the same one, then it's going to be important for you to realize that you need to be active and you can't let more than 10 days pass. Otherwise that instance is going to go right back and be recycled into the community. They don't want to dish out instances and people are just holding on to them and not making use of them because ServiceNow uses, they, they have these general instances that you can use as are in terms of your own PDI or your own personal developer instance. But then they also have like lab instances that you'll be using when you go through now learning. So those are shared amongst a lot of a bit, amongst a broad community. And then when they also do webinars or live webinars through Zoom, sometimes they'll create other instances for projects they're working on and share it with the audience so that they can look around and, and do some of the workshop work alongside a presenter. All right, now the last thing that I want to show you, and this is really, this is a cross between like now learning the platform and then the documentation page. So if we click on all here, we can do what's called a guided setup. So if you click on guided setup, you can look at different, different applications or, or modules and you can do guided tours for these. So one that I was really excited about because in my organization, I did a lot of knowledge management work was a knowledge guided setup. So if we click on this one, for example, you'll see what this has to offer. And this is a really good way to do intake, maybe even before your company utilizes ServiceNow. You can get some, some good questions out of this guided setup to help guide and prepare you for when you're actually going through the implementation process. So if you see here, they say, get started with guided setup. You can click get started. There's a percentage of how much you've completed. You can, it says, get going, learn and be empowered. So get up and running with knowledge management quick and easily, learn common configurations in knowledge management, and then feel empowered to make additional configuration changes at a later time. 
Now, again, this is your own personal developer instance. This is your own kind of guided experience, but you can also just leverage now learning and any free courses to go through this as well. But as you see, there's some really good articles. So who are the consumers of knowledge based content? Again, when you're creating your knowledge base, who's actually going to be using that? Which type of consumer should have access to the knowledge base? Who are the admins, owners, and managers for the knowledge bases? Are there external sources that can be integrated or need to be integrated? So these are all great questions to start with. And these are things you can ask your organization or your IT department now. So which article templates do you want to set up? For articles in particular, there's a lot of good uh, leading questions. And then they have some recommended reading. So if you want to go to the um, product documentation, I can click on here and it'll take me to the product docs page related to knowledge manager specifically. And it should be within the same release that I'm in or same version. So it is. So the release version that I'm in in the PDI is Tokyo. And it brings me to a Tokyo article around knowledge management. So really cool. Okay, now if you're new to this whole service now environment. One thing I will say as a best practice is to upgrade your instance. And this is really cool. So imagine you have all this stuff built into, let's say the San Diego version. And when you go live, your organization wants you to be on the net new, you want to be on the completely new instance. So what you can do is you can upgrade your instance right in here. And you see this option down here where my cursor is at. So upgrade instance, you're going to left click on that. And then it's going to say, hey, your current version is Tokyo patch 4B. We recommend upgrading to our latest release, which is Utah patch one, so that you get access to the latest features and functionalities. So let's go ahead and click on latest and then upgrade instance. And now it's in progress. So when you go back into your instance, it should have the latest version. And if I'm not mistaken, it'll give you a notification once the upgrade has been complete and then you'll be good to go. I recommend this. 100% because what, what you're doing and all the time you're spending may be in vain if you don't really understand the new enhanced features. And it may not even be necessary. Every release has a focus on a certain product. And I think with Utah, it was like the UX UI feel. So everything else was left the same. But if you're looking to do more design work, then you want to be in the Utah version for that process. All right, so there we have it. That is the process in a nutshell. That's how you get your developer instance. I highly recommend that you get your own separate one. That way you can do testing on features that you really find useful or areas that you wanna focus in on. If you are the system administrator for your organization, then you should have access to your own developer instance for your company. So let's say your company is Cookies, or us, I don't know. <laughs> you can tell I want some cookies. Then you'll have a production environment, a test environment, and then a developer environment to really get in and make changes to. But if you want to do things independent of that, then I recommend getting your own personal developer instance. And just remember, if you're doing now learning content, then the now learning will be focused in on a specific module and they will have their own lab instances for you to use. And that way you can validate activities in the lab and ensure that you're doing things correctly. So just make sure you're working in that lab instance and not your own personal developer instance so that you can get credit or get validated for the work you're doing. With that said, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate your support. I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, if you have questions, please leave those down in the comments below so I can make content for you and answer any questions that you may have or the community at large may have. I just want to stress again, and I say this in every video, but this whole process of learning something new and, and, and taking your time to go through it and meeting an expectation for a role, maybe at your job, it can be a bit overwhelming. And there's all these things competing for your attention. And the one thing you don't want to do is add to that difficulty by being hard on yourself. Instead, just work hard on yourself. And in working hard on yourself, you are evaluating what makes you feel comfortable, what challenges you're able to, to thrive in, how you can communicate, asking questions, building systems, and just continually improving how you approach learning new material. That said, thank you for watching. Again, really, really appreciate your support. 
And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Dear me. Dear me. Three to six months. Watch how I make you proud.